Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so we are picking back up again with X-Men Fantastic Four number two. And I love the first one, right? The idea of like Franklin Richards, you know, wanting to join the X-Men. And for those of you guys who didn't see our first video, uh, you'll find the link to it down in the description. A lot of you guys have asked about that. A lot of you guys have kind of expressed frustration in so far as we're doing like multiple part videos and then we don't link the previous video in the description. Uh, so we're gonna start doing that. So so uh, Jacob, if you're editing this or Gordon, if you're editing this from now on, uh, put the link to the previous video in a series at the top of the description so that people can go see see it because we don't want folks to be lost <laughs> but in the first video we had basically talked about how you had the x-men showing up on the doorstep of the fantastic four and basically putting forward this idea that franklin richards is a mutant and as such he belongs in krakoa now an important thing to understand here is the x-men were not going to take franklin against his will right it's one of these things where when it comes to krakoa it's simply just an offer that's there right the x-men aren't going to show up on your doorstep throw a black bag over your head and then drag you to krakoa it's simply an option that's there now most mutants have taken advantage of it, right? Because it's a safe haven. They're among their own kind, so they can kind of experience and engage and enjoy their own culture, but also because there's safety in numbers, right? Not to mention, there's some pretty heavy hitters on Krakoa. Apocalypse, Magneto, different things like that. You know, Exodus especially. Exodus is ridiculously overpowered. People are sleeping on how powerful Exodus is. And I feel like during Hickman's run on X-Men, you're gonna see just how powerful Exodus can be because he is he is a hoss. It's, it's, it's nuts. Like, it's, it's crazy how powerful, like, like that, that telepathy and telekinesis, man, that guy is nuts. But regardless, you know, it's one of the offers is basically just there. And so when the X-Men had shown up on the Fantastic Four's doorstep and said, hey, look, we want Franklin to come join us on Krakoa, immediately the Fantastic Four hit the roof. And they were like, no. <laughs> one, because they were concerned parents and they didn't want their kid just gallivanting off with the X-Men. But two, because one of the things to remember is that when it comes to the X-Men and Krakoa, while the X-Men are doing this, you know, and, and really the mutant population's doing this as a means to kind of give themselves a safe haven, they're also remaining uh, very cloak and dagger, right? Very ambiguous to the world. And so the Fantastic Four don't really even know what's going on. There's a lot of questions that were never really answered. And of course, Mama Bear, Susan Storm started freaking out. And so during that whole that whole conflict, essentially Kitty Pride kind of talked to Franklin and said, hey, like, are you interested in this kind of thing? And then ultimately Franklin ended up just kind of taking off and then in turn, basically sneaking aboard Kitty Pride's ship with the Marauders and where he was essentially discovered by, by Dr. Doom, right? And so what this does is it picks up with kind of a conversation that takes place afterwards. This idea that you have Cyclops and you have the X-Men who are all kind of talking to the Fantastic Four and the Fantastic Four kind of looking at them and saying, hey, look, we don't know where our kid is, but you're the reason why he took off and, and so on and so forth. But it's one of these things where they're kind of trying to talk reason to the team, right? Trying to be reasonable here and say, hey, look, here's what's really going on when it comes to the bigger picture. But Susan Storm doesn't want to listen. And in this kind of anger, in this, this moment of, of reaction, she lashes out. And so where Cyclops turns back to Magneto and says, it's going to be a problem. And the reason why is because, again, Susan Storm is wildly powerful. She's one of the most underrated characters in Marvel Comics in terms of the power she possesses, right? Being able to create force fields, being able to be invisible. You know, you can't hit what you can't see. And if, if Susan Storm shows up on your doorstep and you can't see that she's there and then she opens a force field inside your head and makes it explode or decides to make you suffocate inside of a force field, there's not much you're going to be able to do to stop her, right? It's going to take a super high level telepath in order to basically bring her down, right? So in a lot of ways, she's kind of the most dangerous member of the Fantastic Four outside of like Franklin Richards. And so what this does is it kind of turns the discussion on its head, where you have Reed coming in and saying, look, they're a nation. We can't necessarily just go in there and take our son back. We would essentially be waging war, that kind of a thing. Everybody really kind of points to Reed and says, but you're the one that ran him off in the first place, right? You're the one that put that inhibitor on him that basically took away the ability for Krakoa to recognize him as a mutant. You're the one that basically made the choice for him and saying, you're never going to be able to go Krakoa because you cannot pass through the gates. It was Reed's desire as a parent to keep his son safe, but he also took away his son's ability to choose. And that ultimately is what led to Franklin Richards leaving. And so what we end up doing is picking back up with Kitty Pride and company because as we saw when Dr. Doom showed up at the end of the last video it was what in the world's gonna happen and when they wake up they're really all kind of brought there as individuals who are there for the purpose of Dr. Doom not really to conquer but to kind of talk to right it's really more of like a meeting of friends it's almost kind of how it comes across now it is intriguing that Dr. Doom chose to knock everybody out and then drag them to this secret island but the reason why that was done is because the island is secret no one's supposed to know about it right it's called Doom Island and what he did here is he basically created a refuge for himself that's hidden away 
from the world, right? So it's not picked up on any form of radar or sonar, and it's physically invisible to the human eye. But it's kind of a cool thing, because what he says here is his whole goal, the reason why he's here is not to conquer mutants, it's not to somehow force the hand of the mutant population or to invade Krakoa or anything like that. It's because his goal is to basically wake up the powers of Franklin Richards, to wake his powers up to the point where it's at their full potential. Now, again, in the last video, what we saw was that Franklin's powers were essentially weakening, right? He was losing his powers. And the idea was that he had a kind of connection to the god power, right? This idea that all these super powerful mutants or however it's looked at basically get their abilities from quote unquote the god power and Franklin Richards gets, a, gets all of his abilities from that directly. But he, he seems to have lost that connection, at least according to the speculation of Reed Richards. And so restoring that connection will, re will restore his powers back to where they were. But the conversation here from Dr. Doom seems to be to amplify his abilities, right? To make him more powerful than he was before his powers started dropping off. And so what you end up doing is jumping over to the X-Men where they kind of start having this conversation, right? And they're talking about things like, should we either go to where we can locate Kitty Pride since they've picked up on her location, at least Xavier has, should we go there to where she is? Or should we prepare for an attack from the Fantastic Four? Because the belief of the Fantastic Four, not knowing that Doctor Doom has Franklin and all of them, is that the X-Men are in possession of Franklin. That Franklin was either taken by the X-Men or went there willingly, but regardless, their goal is to get their son back. And so ultimately, the smartest move here is to prepare for a conflict from the Fantastic Four, right? To prepare for that, to defend against that, and then if things pop off, to in turn try to overcome that battle and then go find Franklin, but to basically defend their home territory first. And this is when things get cool, because what you end up having here is this kind of conversation between Emma Frost, Magneto, Cyclops, and Nightcrawler. And Nightcrawler really says, well, here's the thing, guys, like you can plan all you want to, but there's no planning for the mind of Reed Richards, right? He can do anything he wants to. Chances are he's considered a possibility like this before, bearing in mind that the X-Men and the Fantastic Four have fought in the past. So that would lead Reed Richards to kind of create safety measures for a, a situation like this, where he had to fight the X-Men again, or he could just think on the spot. And because he's so highly intelligent, he'd be able to come up with any number of things almost instantaneously. And that's where Nightcrawler says, and that's the danger of it all. Because given the mind of Reed Richards and the power of Susan Storm, the Invisible Woman, they could appear virtually anywhere. And then boom, out of nowhere, they're just there. <laughs> the Fantastic Four have been there the whole time. <laughs> That's the crazy thing about it is it's like the invisible woman kept them invisible and they just showed up on the doorstep of the X-Men. And it's like, how could you not know this? But that's the power, right? That's the power of the Fantastic Four. Because what they'd done is they had put on helmets that had basically blocked telepathic detection, right? So none of the telepaths knew they were there. No one knew they were there. And they just showed up here. Susan Storm made them invisible. And then suddenly they're launching an attack. Now, right off the bat, Cyclops makes the smart move and takes out Susan Storm, right? He looks at that and says, okay, she's the linchpin behind which their entire attack centers. Take her out and everything else crumbles. And that's exactly what happens. Susan Storm is knocked out, and then now it's just Reed Richards, Ben Grimm, and Johnny Storm facing off against the X-Men. And despite how powerful they are, the defensive abilities that Susan Storm offers, the ability to create force fields, the ability to render members of her team and herself invisible, is something that's just not easily overcome. With Susan Storm out of the equation now, the rest of the Fantastic Four are really just kind of on the fence, right? Doing the best they can to fend off against these guys. And really, you, you kind of have guys like, like Nightcrawler jumping in, you've got Cyclops jumping in, that kind of thing, and they're able to overcome come each one of them quite readily. Reed Richards is of course trying to wake up Susan Storm and then that's when it really dawns on him, the helmet. The helmet is the key, right? The helmets, that's the key to waking Susan Storm up. And so what he does is he pops the helmet of Susan Storm. Emma Frost chimes in, says somebody got the, got the helmet of Susan Storm off, not realizing what's going on. And then her psychic attack wakes up Susan Storm and then the helmet slam back on again. Susan Storm's back up and they're back to the races. This is the ingenuity and the intelligence of Reed Richards. And it's awesome that Chip Zdarsky wrote him like this. It's a genius thought process. Process. And that's what Nightcrawler was talking about when he was referencing the intelligence of Reed and how capable he is, right? And so, of course, Susan Storm does exactly what we thought she would do, which is create a force field and the team basically gets out of there and they travel to the location of where Kitty Pride is supposed to be with the rest of the X-Men following suit. And so following that, you pick up with Kitty Pride and the Marauders really kind of coming to this recollection of what's likely going to happen here. If Franklin Richards is here, they deduce the entire situation. The X-Men are basically going to try to locate Franklin Richards. They're going to realize Kitty Pride is here. They're going to locate Kitty Pryde. They're going to come to the island. The Fantastic Four are going to believe the X-Men have Franklin Richards. They're going to end up in a conflict with the X-Men and then learn the location of where Franklin Richards really is, or at least where Kitty Pryde was, who was the last person seen with Franklin, and they're going to end up in this location, right? So everybody's going to show up on the doorstep of Dr. Doom's Citadel. And this is when things get cool, because what Dr. Doom basically says is when the question's asked, what are we going to do? Like, are you prepared for some kind of conflict like this? Dr. Doom says, yes, Dr. Doom is always prepared. And what we end up finding out is that Doom is basically 
creating sentinels. He's been creating these Doctor Doom, like these Doombot enormous sentinels. The difference here is that when humanity created sentinels, they created them using whatever technology and whatever knowledge humanity had. Doctor Doom is smarter than all of them. What you're talking about is Doctor Doom, one of the smartest people in the entirety of the Marvel Universe, with all kinds of different resources at his disposal, to say nothing of his technology and magical abilities, creating sentinels. I would wager these guys would decimate the X-Men. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.